Today on the Topping Show, Vivek Ramaswamy reacts to the Ukraine saying that they will only hold elections if the United States pays for them. You have Elon Musk versus the Anti-Defamation League. Budweiser long weekend perk tweet fails, oh, even flatter than their beer, even with censorship. Nikki Haley speaks out on defending women's sports. DeSantis on buying climate change hits 300,000 views. Disney park workers go viral for twerking. Spotify has invested $1 billion in podcasting, but still is not showing profit. Mini may kill the stick shift. Mercedes CLA concept to take on the Tesla. ESPN is dropped from Spectrum with ongoing contract disputes. And Best Buy fires the whistleblower as the boycott ensues. All of that and much more on The Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of The Topping Show is sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value added reseller and services company with a special proficiency in IT security. Heck, I see their founder at least twice a day. Gotta say he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, that's the joke. If you're an IT leader or a business owner and need a little assistance, you can reach the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of September. So if you click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, going on to the business part of the podcast, you have Spotify has spent $1 billion to try to become the podcasting king, and they're still struggling to actually find a profit. Now, this isn't, well, it should be moderately concerning. They were actually founded back over in April 2006. So I know United States public schools are all-time low for math scores, science scores, history scores. So we'll do a little bit of education today. So if they're founded in April 2006, that means they're about actually 17 years old. Founded over in Sweden by Daniel Eek and Martin Morrison. Now, it looks like they spent an astonishing amount of money on talent. And I use that, if you're only listening to the show, I use my good old quotation marks. My fingers almost, almost hurt because I had to emphasize talent so much because I would say most of these are... I was about to say artists, they're certainly not artists, but they've spent, or I would say pissed away money investing or, you know, trying to invest in talent such as Kim Kardashian, which I I don't know why, why, why would anyone want a podcast of her when I'm, the whole appeal of that family is just how interesting they are on the service level. Like, I you know people watch them because they spend a disproportional amount of their income on plastic surgery. So they are supporting the local economy, presumably, but I, I can't think of anyone or could not even fathom anyone who would want to listen to them on a podcast. They also spent $25 million, so that's $100 million just for Kim Kardashian, which there's no way they broke even on that deal. I mean, I wouldn't pay, I would pay, I would pay, ne actually, wait, 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 I take that back. I would pay negative amount of money for them to not talk. So if they could somehow have that as a subscription service, I would actually pay them to just go away. But that's, another, that's not the Spotify business model. That's just something I'm thinking off the cuff, so to say. So they spent $100 million on Kim Kardashian. That's not going to pan out. They spent $25 million on the Obamas, which they may, eh, they might break even with that. I don't know. I debate how many people actually buy politicians' books, as well as their social media and things like this. I know a couple of people may be turned in, so maybe they'll break even on that investment. Now, they also spent $20 million to lock in exclusive content with Prince Harry and the insufferable Meghan Markle, which, yeah, she's up there in terms of who gives a damn what she has to say. I mean, she is so, both of the couple actually, both uh, Prince Harry and her, they're so narcissistic and insufferable. Again, I would pay a subscription service to not listen to them, and yet, Spotify thought, big name, big glamour, it's got to be worth the risk. Well, no. I mean, again, a great example of who gives a damn. He, apparently, he published a book as well, which, ironically, I did see something on social media where he got like 25 million views about the book. However, it was someone turning the book into a garbage can, which is probably the most apt appropriate use for a book by Prince Harry. They literally ground up the book, mixed it with epoxy, and turned it to a dustbin as the Europe's might call it. In the United States, we just call it a trash bin because it's trash. So I can't help but think that was a waste of money. Now, they did spend $100 million on Joe Rogan. That is the only thing I could see them making a money, actually a profit on, since he quite is literally the most famous and successful podcaster in history. So 
in his case, that was brilliant in terms of acquiring that talent, getting him off YouTube where now he's just doing highlights of his show. I know people who download Spotify only because they acquired Joe Rogan with an exclusivity contract, myself included. I didn't have Spotify on my phone before Joe Rogan had that exclusivity contract. Now, if you wanna watch his full uninterrupted show, you have to download Spotify. And I say uninterrupted, I think you have Spotify advertisements unless you pay for the premium XY Banana Falcon level of support, or in this case, you know, just premium package. But that was probably a prudent business decision. That was a good idea. Cause again, it's the biggest name in podcasting. He, if you look at his audience, is a very diverse. You have people on the left, people on the right, people in the middle. A lot of people tune into his show. So that, even though it sounds like a lot, $100 million, that seemed like a prudent business decision because, again, this is a multi year contract with him. They'll probably, they're, I would suspect they're making a good profit on Joe Rogan. Now, another thing they moronically paid for, they paid $286 million for a pair of podcast studios. That's beyond moronic. $286 million for two podcast studios? That's. I can't think of a worst waste of money. Just a little math, that's $143 million. Again, for a podcast studio. You could spend, even my interview podcast where my IT company spent a fair amount of capital to get the best 4K cameras on the planet. We got an exceptional, what was it? The Blackmagic A10 4K Studio Switcher. We got enterprise grade hardware and it wasn't even near six figures. It was in the five figures. And again, that stuff, the Blackmagic makes up exceptional podcasting and telecom, or I was gonna say telecom, it's more television production products. It's commercial grade, it'll last years and it's 4K. And yet they spent $143 million per studio. How are you gonna make a profit on that? that? That's just for the studio? Even if you bought land and built and constructed a building you can still keep that under, like, what is it? You can easily do that for five to 10 million, but they spent all that money. I can't see how they make money on those stupid studios. I can only presume maybe one of them's in Beverly Hills or somewhere where the land is so expensive, but even that begs the question, why put it there? Live in a global economy, you could have podcast interviews. I know ideally you wanna have face-to-face -face come to the studio, that's when you get the best production, but even at a fraction that costs you fly people out to wherever you have the podcast. It's ridiculous. That was probably, look at, the, look at their P&L, look at all the things they bought and sold and invested in the company. That has to be the biggest waste of money in terms of expenditures. Now, they also noted in the first six months of 2023, they lost $500 million. And they're definitely trying to get this platform to grow. They have their Spotify, the CEO, Daniel Eek, he said his goal is to make Spotify the world's largest audio company, generating $100 billion by 2030. 100 billion? I don't know what metric or where on earth he chose that number, if it's based in reality. Their current revenue as of last year was 12 billion, which again, 12 billion is a great amount of revenue. They're still struggling to get a profit. I'm sure they'll get there in time after they stop wasting money on such moronic investments or I say sunk cost as Meghan Merkel and again, $286 million for a pair of podcast studios. That's, again, buying the best equipment on the planet, it would still be less than a million dollars. So I can't fathom the moronic location or the construction of the building. That seems like the biggest waste of money. Because of course, podcasts take time to actually make an ROI. Most podcasts lose money, presumably, not indefinitely, but most of them, if they're lucky, they'll break even. The podcasting is kind of like the gold rush. The companies who are really doing well just like during the California gold rush back in the day, are companies manufacturing the supplies, such as, you know, back in the day, it was Levi jeans. Or in this case, you have Rode microphones or you have Sure microphones. I mean, there's a lot of products where, a lot of instances where they're not gonna make a profit. It's a very competitive industry. I mean, I, like, I can only do mine because my tech company offsets the cost. So it's one of those instances where, statistically speaking, most of them aren't gonna make a profit so I don't know, again, I don't know where this CEO is coming with that. Where is he coming up with that $100 billion metric? It's a great goal, but that's a, I mean, again, it's already 2023. 2030 is right around the corner. I can't fathom how they're gonna get there without taking out more capital for 
maybe they'll do a bunch of they'll buy out a bunch of the competition but even then there's not a there's not a lot of podcast hosting competitors maybe 10 big ones left maybe well, maybe seven i mean you already had stitcher biting the dust and i believe they were acquired by iHeartRadio, which is headquartered over in um, san antonio texas so it'll be interesting to see how they expect to hit that growth chart but i always say time shall tell and also this show is on spotify for free the topping show Thank you everyone for, again for taking the time to tune in. I know it's a high, high ambition. I'm trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of September. So if you click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also really appreciate the comments and the likes. The comments really help build the channel, grow and develop, as well as if you have individual experiences with these topics, love hearing more frontline experience, whether it's the ongoing UAW United Auto Workers strike, or maybe someone who has some firsthand experience working at an automobile company, you can maybe tell us why they're killing all these beautiful stick shifts to go with automatics. So any insight is also greatly appreciated. Also, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone, just stay safe and fight the good fight.